When it comes to training in track and field, you always hear about season openers being slower than the eventual performances of athletes in major competitions like the Olympics. Commentators and online sources always say this, but haven't you ever wondered how it is that this happens? That's where periodization comes in. Periodization in track and field is a structured training approach that divides the year into specific cycles, such as macro cycles, meso cycles, and micro cycles to systematically vary training intensity, volume, and specificity, allowing athletes to peak at optimal times for competitions while preventing overtraining and enhanced performance. In track and field, the three most commonly used forms of periodization are linear periodization, undulating periodization, and athlete-based periodization. While these three main types of periodization share a lot in common, they have their key differences that separate their effectiveness depending on the individual athlete. As I explained before, periodization is a training approach that divides the year into specific cycles such as macro cycles, meso cycles, and micro cycles. Before I talk about the different types of periodization, it's important to understand what these different phases are in order to get a basic understanding of periodization. First off, a macro cycle refers to a season of training in its entirety. It is an annual plan that works towards peaking for the year's major competitions. A meso cycle is an intermediate training block or phase within the larger macro cycle, the overall training plan. Meso cycles in sprint training usually range between 3 to 1 and 2 to 1 training approaches. What does this mean exactly though? A 3 to 1 meso cycle is basically 3 weeks of intense training followed by a week of a deload period. A deload involves a temporary decrease in training volume, intensity, or both to allow for recovery and adaptation before ramping up again. While deloading in a sprint training program, it's important to keep intensities high during sprint repetitions, but keep the volume low. A good rule of thumb that I use during my deloads is a 50% decrease in volume while maintaining sprint intensities at greater than or equal to 95%. In the gym, I also decrease the volume by 50%, but I decrease the intensity by 10%. A micro cycle refers to the individual training days of a week. When it comes to micro cycles, a lot of times people get stuck up on the traditional seven day week model. It is important to note that sprint training requires a significant amount of recovery in between high intensity sessions. So most of the time you won't be able to fit everything you want into a seven day cycle. Sometimes using a nine or 10 day cycle might be better for you as it allows for more recovery. Finding the right meso cycle depends on how much volume you can handle given a specific time period. This differs athlete to athlete, but most elite coaches like the two to one training approach. Now that the foundation is placed, let's talk about the three major types of periodization. In linear periodization, the season is divided into three main parts, the general preparation phase, the preseason phase, and the competition phase. During the general preparation phase or the GPP, the athletes focus on less specific forms of training that develop general fitness and aerobic endurance properties. As the competition period comes closer, the forms of training become more specific to the demands of the event the athlete runs. This is supposed to build a foundation of general fitness for athletes so they can later tolerate the high demands of maximal effort sprinting. This is good for beginner athletes. Building a general fitness base as a beginner can build a foundation for longevity in your sport. Hyper-focusing on specific forms of training early on in training age can lead to stagnation and injury even though you might see a lot of progress from the get-go. Building an athletic base can expand your overall potential. So having an athletic base is very important. Now, linear periodization does have its downsides. Since athletes only really start doing specific forms of training close to competition, this leaves them unprepared when the time period actually comes since they have spent the majority of the year training less specific forms of training that don't really translate as effectively to sprinting. After the initial year or two of an athlete's development, linear periodization may be redundant as following the same progression will only leave the athlete in stagnation. A better form of linear periodization is when vertical integration is used alongside it. Vertical integration was introduced by Charlie Francis, and it's when you train all the pieces of the total training equation throughout the year, but the difference is in emphasis depending on the phase of training. 
An example of vertical integration would be having a higher emphasis on tempo endurance sprinting in the off season while still training speed in the form of maximal effort acceleration, just in smaller quantities when compared to tempo running. The most common form of linear periodization is when it is used with vertical integration. Now let's talk about undulating periodization. Undulating periodization isn't talked about as much, but is a very powerful tool for more developed athletes. Undulating periodization is like linear periodization, but instead of one cycle performed throughout the entirety of a year, it is multiple cycles performed in periods of a few weeks or months each. The purpose of undulating periodization is to stay sharp throughout the whole year. Undulating periodization develops each quality of the speed formula throughout the series of weeks or months. For example, for four weeks the aim of the training program can be max strength development in the gym and early to middle acceleration development in the track. After the four weeks pass, the aim would be switched to power development in the gym, focusing on moving more moderately heavy weights faster while developing later acceleration and top speed on the track. After that cycle is done, the training progresses to top speed and speed endurance development. Finally, after that phase is done, it would cycle back to max strength and early acceleration development. While undulating periodization is great for staying sharp year round, the length of each phase can be too short to develop each individual component of the phases. A smarter approach to undulating periodization is athlete-based periodization. Athlete-based periodization is undulating periodization except the phases are assigned to the specific things the athlete needs to develop. The training plan is designed to play towards the strengths of the athlete while developing their weaknesses. In athlete-based periodization, an athlete may have a phase of training where they develop their max strength and early acceleration for as long as they need to until they see sufficient progression. Once the athlete adapts to training, the training is changed. If the athlete keeps doing the same form of training, they won't progress as much. So it is important to introduce new stimulus. The athlete can then progress to longer acceleration and top speed development in the track and in the gym focusing on moving moderately heavy loads quickly. This progression can only be done when the athlete's performance is measured and the results show they have adapted enough to the training. Of course, these examples are just for reference. Each training plan is unique to each athlete using this approach. While athlete-based periodization is strong, it also has a downside. This downside is that it is almost impossible to apply this in a large team setting scale. In a team full of 100 athletes, for example, it would be too difficult to apply specific training plans for each athlete. This is why you see so many programs use linear periodization with vertical integration at this scale. But at an individual level, athlete-based periodization is more effective. In athlete-based periodization, the training plan can also circle back to earlier qualities to continue to develop them. Figuring out which form of periodization is appropriate for you depends on your training age and level of fitness. More advanced athletes can benefit from athlete-based periodization, which personalizes their training plan. Thank you guys so much for watching. Remember to always strive to be better and stay planetary.